Hey, this is Aaron Varble, and the Raw After Elimination Chamber happened, which started the road to WrestleMania. Let's get into it, as most of our questions are answered with other questions to ask. Raw started with Alexa Bliss and Mickie James walking out to the ring like best buddies, and Alexa Bliss really put herself over. She started to run down everyone else in the female Elimination Chamber match, but took a special moment to give extra credit to Mickie James for being a mentor, and Mickie James seemed surprised by it as well. Then Blissey started talking about Asuka, and then Asuka came out to answer it. A bunch of Asuka's gonna kill you chants broke out from the crowd, and it was just deserved. Then Nia Jax came down. Asuka took out Mickie James and Alexa Bliss, and they powdered out of the ring. And then Nia picked up Asuka, and she countered into a triangle lock. But Bliss and James jumped on Asuka, and they beat her down. Until Bailey and Sasha Banks ran down for the save. And that started a match. It was a pretty good back and forth match where the baby faces took a lot of damage, especially Bailey and Sasha. And then as Sasha was climbing toward the corner to make a tag, Bailey jumped off the apron and refused to tag her, leaving Sasha to go, What the heck? But near the end of the match, Bailey jumped in the ring to save Asuka when she wouldn't help out Banksy earlier which is interesting and then Asuka locked down an arm bar on Mickey James and she tapped out so the baby faces win John Cena came down next and started complaining that he doesn't have an opponent for Wrestlemania and said that he failed he was awfully sad about this and then he turned around and he challenged the Undertaker to a match at Wrestlemania and then he said you want Wrestlemania that is Wrestlemania and that is not happening that match is not happening apparently it was a big tease. John Cena said the match with the dead man is impossible. And then he said he's going to seek out his opponent on SmackDown Live. Because he's a free agent and he can do that. So he left. So we'll see you tomorrow night, John. Bray Wyatt and Heath Slater had a weird thing next where Bray Wyatt came down to the ring and just attacked Rhino. And then he attacked Heath Slater. And he demolished them all with Sister Abigail's. And then he got on the microphone and he said, The Great War is far from over, my friend. You will meet me again. And he was talking about Matt Hart. Hardy, and he said that the slaughter was all on Matt Hardy's head and he concluded by saying that his woken eyes will stay shut forever because Bray Wyatt is creepy. The Miz came out next and he is awesome and cut an amazing promo about being Intercontinental Champion and how he should be in WrestleMania and apparently Kurt Angle told The Miz that his match tonight would help determine his opponent at WrestleMania and then Seth Rollins came out and they had a nice little match and Seth Rollins beat him and then Finn Balor came down next and he faced The Miz in a weird little little mini gauntlet match and that didn't last very long until the Miz jumped in and attacked Finn Balor and then Gallows and Anderson ran down and they saved their buddy from getting attacked and it was too sweet but then Kurt Angle came out and ejected them from ringside so the Miz and Finn Balor had a match together which Finn Balor ended up winning so I'm not really sure what that proved but Seth Rollins was interviewed by Renee Young right after that and he said that he wants a match for the Intercontinental Championship at Wrestlemania so there you go next up you had Roman Reigns coming out and he got got booed out of the building, which should be expected, but what wasn't expected is when he kind of flipped the script on us a little bit and unveiled that Brock Lesnar wasn't in the building tonight. Instead, he was walking around Las Vegas with Dana White wearing a UFC t-shirt, taking selfies and whatnot at Elimination Chamber when everyone else was working, and Brock wasn't even in the building that night. And he was led to believe up until 30 minutes before going out that Brock would be there, and now he's not. And then he said something like, I don't respect Brock. Brock Lesnar, and I damn sure don't fear that uh, female dog. It's WrestleMania season, so to amp things up a little bit, Roman Reigns is gonna say the B word sometimes. That's kind of been their track record. But then Roman said he's gonna go back to the back and take the butt chewing that he knows is coming because he's a man. Unlike some people, he actually respects this place. While talking about WWE, referring to Brock Lesnar, trying to say that Brock Lesnar doesn't respect WWE. If Lesnar is out the door, this might be a really good way to, to get Roman Reigns over with some of those hardcore fans that are liable to boo him at Wrestlemania, that's for sure. So that's pretty smart. The Bar vs. Titus Worldwide faced off next in the 2 out of 3 falls match for the Raw Tag Team titles because we were asking for that, and the Bar won 2 falls to 0. So, there you go. But I will give it to Titus O'Neil and Apollo because they really wore them out. Sheamus put a picture up on his Instagram after the match and his chest looked like ground beef. Very pale ground beef. 
And to close out the show, you had uh, the big Ronda Rousey segment, uh, but Triple H uh, and Stephanie McMahon came out first. They cut a promo about how Kurt Angle was hallucinating and all that stuff that he told Ronda Rousey was absolutely false, about how they said they were going to keep their thumb on her and control her now that they have her under a WWE contract. Then Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey came out and they didn't look happy. Well, Ronda Rousey came out and Kurt Angle chased after her. Rousey said she refuses to be disrespected and she's nobody's property. And then she wanted to address that slap that Stephanie McMahon laid on her and said that she's never been slapped before, which I definitely think is not probable. Suddenly, to seemingly diffuse the situation, Kurt Angle jumped in and admitted that he was lying the entire time and, and Stephanie McMahon and Triple H didn't say those things about Ronda Rousey. And then just as they were about to leave, Triple H turned around and laid a right hand in on Kurt Angle and set him down. One punch and Kurt Angle was down. And Raw went off the air this week as Triple H and Stephanie McMahon walked up the ramp and Ronda Rousey was leaning over Kurt Angle to check on him after that vicious right hand from the game. So the road to WrestleMania looks like we're going to have a match between Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, so that'll be fun. And it looks like there are plenty more things a brewing as well. Well, it's been real. Until next time, I'm Aaron Varble. You guys have a good one. Bye.